I want you to please turn with me to Genesis 35 and we will read together verse 15 before we sit down and then we'll have a corporate reading. I want you to look into the word of God and let's excavate this word this morning. The word of God is like a treasure. Let's get into the word and let's pull certain things that the Holy Ghost will work with. Whenever there is a miracle anywhere and there is absence of the word of God, it's magic. Every time that you see the supernatural, but it, it lacks the foundation of the word of God, it's only a performance. Oh my God, you didn't hear that somebody. Uh, the, the word of God and the spirit of God is the raw material for miracle. And a lot of people are waiting for the prayer. They'll be like, okay, I'll be waiting for when the man of God going to be speaking into my situation. I'll be waiting to when the prophetic word will come out. Listen, if you don't get the word, the recipe is not complete. The word prepares the ground for the spirit to move. So get into this thing this morning with me. I want you to go to the book of Genesis 35. And I want to read verse 15 all the way down corporate reading place and Jacob called the name of the place where God speak with him Bethel and they journeyed from Bethel and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath and Rachel tra traveled and she had hard labor and it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in the parting, for she died, that she called his name Benoni. And another translation like the New Living Translation will let you see the meaning of the word Benoni. And Benoni means the son of my sorrow. But she called him Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Benjamin means the son of my strength. And the Bible says in verse 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon our grave. That, that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. Let me hear you say, yes, Lord. While you are still getting ready for the word, can you please also turn with me to the same book of Genesis and let's go to verse 19. Glory to Jesus. Genesis 19, 31, pardon me. 31, chapter 39, 30, 39, 31, verse 19. 31, verse one nine. The Bible says here, and Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Another translation says she stole the idols of her father. And verse thirty-five, the same chapter thirty-one, and she said to her father. No, let's go to 34. Now, Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture. And she sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched but found not the images. Let me hear you say amen. amen. Say again to somebody. Say do not live by your pain. Live by your power. Live by the call of God that's on your life. Live by your anointing. Live by your destiny. Stop defining yourself. Oh my God, why are you talking to the wrong person? Look for somebody with faith and, and prophesy this morning. I need three people to join me to prophesy. 
I don't want to be the only person coming out of here prophesying from the pulpit. I want the anointing on you to speak to somebody and say, stop defining yourself. God, let me hear your voice with power. Say, stop defining your life. That's good. By your pain, express yourself by your power. In the name of Jesus. Give God a big hand, everybody. Thank you, choir. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Satan is constantly looking for a ground to get hosted in our lives. I want you to hear this. The devil is a pest. The devil is a predator. But he's looking for a comfortable ground to breed in your life. That's what he's looking for every time. He's looking for somewhere to, to breed, to lay eggs, so that the eggs can bear fruit. And that's all he want to do. Once he finds a place that's comfortable in your life to stay, he's going to stay there. And when he stays there, he continues to bear eggs and lay eggs and bear fruits and and multiply and one thing will lead to 20 things and 20 things will lead to 100 things and, and by the time you look at your life you don't even know how some issues became so escalated because it started small and then it grows big and then it grows bigger and then over time if you don't interrupt the flow of the cycle what happens is it becomes forced nature it almost becomes a part of you. It almost becomes the definition of who you are. I wish God's anointing today can detach somebody, no matter how strong a stronghold in your life is, no matter how powerful a behavior is, no matter how intense an addiction is, no matter how severe anything that you're grappling in your life right now might be, no matter how real and how tangible the hereditary sickness that's been in the family for generations and has manifested now in your own particular life is, I'm hoping and praying that this morning, the Holy Ghost will be able to go to the root of the issues and separate you and, 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 and cause your spirit man to jump out of this situation so that you can understand that this is not in fact the general definition of what God has called your life. A lot of people, they constantly make a permanent uh, decision in a temporary situation. They, 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 they uh, define themselves, they label themselves by what is going on at the moment in their lives. I want to take you for a minute into that scriptures. I want you to follow me carefully. And I want you to see what had happened to Rachel. The Bible says as Jacob was joining uh, into the promised land, the place that God had promised him, he was going with his family. But something strange happened, God's people. I want you to hear me. Something unusual happened. Something that was out of the pattern of the blessing happened. I want you to understand that before they got to the place that this particular incident happened, the Bible says they just left Bethel. And Bethel means the house of God. Bethel means the presence of God. So they just departed from Bethel. They're just coming from a place of the anointed. They were just coming from the place of power. Okay, so Jacob had come to the place where he first met God. The place where God had given him a vision of the ladder coming down from heaven and the angels of the Lord ascending and descending on the ladder. And now he was leaving Bethel on his way to what God had promised to be his promised land. And, and his wife was having a child. And you would have imagined that to have a child right after you're leaving Bethel was something beautiful. But scripture says the unforeseen happened. And what happened was this woman... Rachel ha was having a son and she died in labor. Now, listen, when you look into that scripture, the way that that incident took place was almost too sporadic, too spontaneous. There was no record of anything going wrong. Just like a woman had a healthy pregnancy and the, and the anointing was there. 
But something negative suddenly happened in the midst of something beautiful. What's going on here? Scripture says she was in travail. She got to, into a place of travail and she started to bring forth a child. And she was in pain. Most women are in pain. No, I didn't say that right. Every woman is in pain in travail. And how could she be having the normal, natural childbirth pain and it became severe that she died in it? Something has gone wrong somewhere. Every time you look around your life and you don't see what is God's will being manifested, you want to take a minute and pause and say, God, what's going on? Or where did it go wrong from? And I take you back to the book of Genesis and you see what had taken place in chapter 31. Oh, God help me today. The Bible says that as they were leaving the house of Laban, Jacob had served in the house of Laban for 14 years. And he was now leaving to start his own family. And he called his, his family together. And he said, now we are going into the house of my father. We are going back to the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And, and get ready, saddle everything you got because we are going. And, and the Bible says as they were packing, everybody was excited. Jacob had not seen his family for years. Everybody was, was you know, wonderfully preparing for that trip. But Rachel picked up one of the idols of her father's house. And when she picked up these idols, the word of God said to us, that Laban did not know and they journeyed on the way but eventually when Laban I want you to hear this discovered that the family had departed Jacob had taken his sons his daughters his wives and everything he owned and he had left me in the twilight unannounced he just left the Bible says Laban saddled his horses with some men to chase after them I want you to notice, child of God, that when they found Jacob and his family, what Laban was concerned about more than anything were the gods, the idols. Why did you take my idols, he said. Okay, I know you took the sons, but why did you take the idol? Why did you tap into the spirit dimension that did not belong to you? Why did you take the gods? And Jacob said, God help me. He said, we have not taken the God. Nobody here took your idols. And Jacob made a pronouncement. He said, anyone that took the idol of Laban shall die. Shall be put to death. Anyone that took, anyone that took the, the, the idol shall die. And the Bible says, Laban wanted to have his idols back. The enemy would always want to have what belongs to him. And that's why if you are going to fulfill the will of God for your life, you cannot carry the devil's materials. You got to give back to the enemy everything that belongs to the enemy. Okay. And that's why Jesus said, give unto Caesar. What belongs to Caesar? Okay. So many believers, they are dealing with Satan's toys. They are carrying things that is not of God. They are carrying idols of their father's house. They are carrying the convictions of the old man into the new man. God was taking Jacob into his destiny. And here was Rachel carrying the old things who am I talking to this morning into the new destiny you gotta drop it you, you got it can't go in with you because it does not belong to the next level the gatekeepers will not let you go over when you still have the devil's material in your life the gatekeepers will block you when you are still dealing with the old mechanism when you are still my God uh, dumbling into things that is not of God uh, when you are still visiting those websites uh, that are abominable unto God uh, you cannot go over to the 
the other side when you are still going and sneaking behind and keeping those relationships that God is not approving of and doing my God one way by day one way by night you cannot step into your promise Jacob said whoever carries the God of Laban will die. He can't go to the promised land. It's a verdict. It's a principle. Whoever is carrying the idols of the father's house, whoever is carrying the things that does not belong with God cannot go to the promised land. And so the Holy Ghost right now is telling me to tell somebody get rid of the idols of your father's house. Get rid of your your character that's not allowing God to manifest his glory in your life get rid of relationships that are keeping you from stepping into the glory of God get rid of those cultural entrenchments that are keeping you from stepping into your destiny the devil is a liar as long as you carry them you're gonna stay here you can't cross over the Bible says when the Lord told the children of Israel to invade Jericho, he told them to plunder Jericho. Don't take anything out of the land. But a greedy man, he saw some fine clothes, hallelujah, some Persian fine carpets. He saw some silver and some gold and he took them to himself. You cannot take what is not of God. You can't have it in your life. You can't have those things on you. You can't carry them. You can't wear the devil's label on your life. Anyone that is carrying the devil's material cannot. You can't carry witchcraft. You can go to psychic and still come to God. You can visit horoscope and try to do Pisces and, and Leo and try to be here and be there. My God, who am I talking to? You cannot take your money and send it to your village for ritual and still believe that God will be God in your life. Drop the devil's material. Otherwise, you cannot... the devil's material drop it drop it tell somebody drop it now don't you can't have it on you you cannot have it when old when the old man has to die you have to tell the old man you die take everything that is old cut off every relationship you tell them that was the old me i can't play games with god i can't play games destiny it's for people who have emptied themselves. You got to empty yourself. The Bible says she took on herself the idols of her father's house. And the father was very, very intense about his own things. Do you know many times when God has made you a new man in Christ Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the devil says, well, I wish God didn't make you new, but it seemed like I have no problem with that. Looks like the Jesus blood that makes you new is superior. But the devil said, I can't let you be new and still carry my stuff. You, you got to give back what belongs to me. You, gotta give, you can't carry the devil's stuff and claim to be new. You got to give it back. The devil says, you got you to gotta give it back. Give it back. You got to strip yourself of pornography you got to give it back give yourself give gambling back it doesn't belong here am i talking to somebody he does not belong here those all those sneaking at night does not belong with this kingdom let it go you got to give it back the bible says laban was searching from tent to tent looking for what belongs to him the idols of his father's house and scripture says, when Rachel knew that these things are going to be exposed, you know what she did? I want you to hear this. She sat on a pouch or a donkey and she took the idol and put it underneath and sat over it. And the man entered into the house and looked. For the idols from place to place. And couldn't find it. 
And then she looked at her and said, are you okay? She said, no, sir. I'm sorry, I can't get up. Why can't you get up? Because the cycle of women is upon me. I'm having my cycle. I'm having my blood flow. I can't get up now. And the Bible says Laban left the room. He left the tent. And he couldn't find the idols. But whenever you've signed an allegiance with the devil, the devil will come back to claim what belongs to him. Okay. A lot of people are doing things in alliance with the devil in secret and nobody knows. And they feel like, well, I'm, I'm getting away with all of this. I'm living a double life and I'm getting away with it. But whenever you sign an allegiance with the devil, even when people don't understand, Satan will come back at you to claim what belongs to him. So a, a, a couple of months later, nothing happened. Everything seemed like it's, 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 it's usual. That's why, look at me church, we have to be careful. We got to be extremely careful. Because many people have been disconnected from the anointing and they are still preaching. Okay. They, oh God help me. They are still dancing. They are still laying hands on people. But the glory has departed. Oh God help me somebody. The, the, the Bible says about Joshua the high priest. Is this not a branch plucked from the fire? When you have some wood in the fire and you take one out, it's no more power of the fire. But because it's not in the fire, does not mean that temporarily it's not having some, some smoke and some little fire. But after a while, it's going to burn out. Some people think, oh well, I'm doing stuff and nobody is, 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 is knowing. God is not even knowing. God must really be happy with me. Because after I walked away from the Lord, after I dipped my hand into the idols of my father's house, after I carried the devil's luggage, after I toyed with the devil's things, I still came out and I sang nicely. I came out and I still danced at the altar. And I still gave and everything still looked normal. Why, why, nothing happened. Oh my God, you have no idea. Things continued as usual. The Bible says a few months later, she got pregnant. And when this woman got pregnant, it was time for her to bring forth. Listen, everybody. Satan gets every covenant that we made unknowingly with the devil. The devil will get it. He will come at you. Many people are making covenant with demons unawares. They don't know. They don't know. You just cut a deal with the, with the demons. Whenever you've gone on a bed that's defied, you made a covenant. Whenever you begin to put your money into psychic website, you just made a sign with the devil with your finance. Okay. Whenever you pull out your credit card and you're a part of something that God is not blessing, you just sign a pact with the devil. That woman, listen to me somebody, the day that she sat on those idols, the day she sat on the idol, she already signed a deal with the devil and said, I put the devil into my process of bringing forth. She signed a deal. It all looked okay, but she signed a deal with the devil. Nobody knew it. But the devil said, I'm coming to get my stuff. So Satan waited for her to get pregnant. And at the time of her delivery, the devil came back. And the devil said, my, your, 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 your child birth belongs to me because you sat on the idol. You sat on the demon. God 
is talking to somebody, you better begin to say to God, I cut every, every deal, every covenant that I don't even recognize that is coming at me right now. Because the word of God says, Christ has delivered us. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for it is written. Curse is everyone hung on the tree. So you begin to activate the blessing and tell God, I destroy everything that I sat on, everything I entangled myself by that I don't even know that the devil is using now to have a leech on my life. The Bible says when she was in childbirth, nothing was wrong. I want you to hear this. No uh, problem with the baby. The baby grew nice. In fact, let me say this to you. The midwife said you have a son. It means that the baby had started to come. Because in the days of the Bible, there was no scan for them to know that it was a what? A boy or a girl. So, and, the, and because healthy babies, they come first through the head, right? And for this baby to be coming through the head and the midwife to know that it was not only a healthy child, but also a male child, it means, glory to God, that the baby was already coming out. She was close to breakthrough. She already had it in her hands. It was normal. It was healthy. There was nothing that should have gone wrong. But the devil came and said, no, you, 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 you're not getting this. Man of God, the devil came and said, you're not having this. Some of you are having projects in your hand. And you are close to having it. You knew you should have it. But sudden forces try to claim some illegal grounds in your life. You can't go on this one. I want you to hear this. The Bible says a strange pain. A demonic traveling pain came on her. And instantly... Within a couple of minutes, she was dying. How could the woman that was having a healthy child, how could the woman that was having a male child, in case you don't know, in, Bible, in Jewish culture, the male child is big deal. How could the woman having a male child, how could the woman who had a, a healthy pregnancy is now only about to just release the baby and, and just take that breath of relief suddenly started to die because the hand of the devil got on it. I came to talk to somebody this morning. Everything in your life that started normal. Everything in your life that started beautiful. Everything in your life that's the will of God. Every project God sent you to do. Every assignment that's on your life. Everything God has placed in your spirit. And you have started to receive it. Every victory that God has destined for your life. And you've started to release it. But now it looks as if the enemy is trying to intercept the process. Come on somebody. Satan is trying to come in to block what God has promised. I promise you, I come in the name of the Lord with the anointing of God and I break the power of the enemy. Somebody say, yes, Lord. And she began to die. She was losing the baby. And the word of God say, look at my eyes, everybody. As she was dying, the pain was so much. The devil was claiming the process of childbirth. The devil said, you sat on the idol. So give me, I'm taking your life. I'm taking your life. As she was dying, this woman did not know how to call the blood of Jesus. And that's the power of the blood. If she knew about the blood, the blood of Jesus would have substituted for the death. She would have said, Jesus died for me so I can die this death. But she didn't know about the blood. And so Satan was claiming her life. I want you to hear me. And because the devil doesn't stop at you. Whenever the devil, come on somebody. Whenever the devil wants to take something, he doesn't take one thing and stop. He takes one and then he takes another. And then he takes another and he takes another. He, the Bible says he comes to steal and then he kills and then he destroys and the cycle continues. And the Bible says as she was in pain and giving birth to this son, suddenly the, the, uh, she, the, 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 the midwife said, you are having a son. And she said, wait a minute, her name name shall be called the son of sorrow. The label 
of the father's idol that was taking her life also came into her tongue. And the devil said, I'm not done with you. I'm getting this son also. He is called the son of sorrow. Be none. And the son who has never lived one day of his life, never experienced life in his innocence, he was coming on the same demonic label, the same demonic spirit that was killing the woman was also trying to claim the son. But thank God for an anointed man. Thank God for a prophetic man. The man of God, the father Jacob said, listen, in the name of the God of Abraham and Isaac, he will not be the non him, but his name shall be called Benjamin. Meaning that the car stopped today. You will not carry the label of pain. Am I talking to somebody right now? My son will not carry the label of pain. All the idols that killed the mother will not have influence to label this son alongside this cycle. Stop right now. This cycle is broken. He says, your name is not be non him, but your your name is Benjamin because you are not a child of sorrow but you are the son of my right hand is there somebody in the building this morning that understand that God is speaking to you and God is saying whatever had been the battle whatever had been the pain whatever had been the struggle that has moved its way from your family because somebody opened the door to deal God says because of your anointing, because of your faith, because of your destiny, because of the grace of God that's on your life, I stop the pain. This is not Benani. This is Benjamin. There is a Benjamin generation that's rising from the place of pain. We are rising from the place of pain. We are rising. It doesn't matter what used to be pain. Right now, God says it is turning to power. I'm not going to live by my pain. I'm going to live by my power. If you believe it, say yes, Lord. Please stand to your feet this morning. We're not doing Benoni anymore. We are in a Benjamin generation. Tell somebody, say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Benjamin. You know what changed Benoni to Benjamin? Look at my eyes. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Change the cycle. Look at my eyes. So, somebody say, God is changing the cycle. Yeah, he's changing it. You're going to tap into a higher realm. And, and you're going to tell those idols that whoever sat on the idol, even if it was me that sat on the idol before, now I got up and I replaced it with the blood of Jesus. I'm not held into that situation. Who am I talking to today right now? There was, there's a man in the Bible called Jabez. The Bible says Jabez was also going through the same thing. The mother had also signed a deal with the devil to label him the child of sorrow. His name shall be called Jabez, which means the child of sorrow. And Jabez said, God, I can't carry this pain. Come and tell somebody, I can't carry this.